Hello and welcome to the video. Matthew here and we're going to look at question 5 which is a 30 mark question. So we have to write 1200 in the form a by 10 to the power of n. So the first thing I like to do with these questions is to write out the number with the decimal point if it hasn't got one already. So if a number hasn't got a decimal point you can just add in 0 0.0 after the number and that hasn't changed the number at all. It just makes this question much easier to do. So I now have 1200.0, which is the exact same as 1200. So it has to be in the form a by 10 to the power of n, where a is between 1 and 10, that's the important part here. That means I need to move the decimal point so that I get my number between 1 and 10. So I'm going to have to move it to the left so that it's between the 1 and the 2, as that's the only number that I can make from this that's between 1 and 10 without changing any digits around. So I have to move the decimal point to the left three places, so that's between 1 and 2, and that will give me 1.2000. The zeros don't really matter, there. you can have as many zeros as you want. 1.2 is still 1.20000, it doesn't matter, it's the same number. But the important thing is that I've moved the decimal point to the left three places, which means my power is going to be 3. So my number is 1.2 multiplied by 10, and the power, which is the n in this case up here, is going to be 3 as the decimal point moved 3 places. So my answer is 1.2 by 10 to the power of 3. And that's why I always put in the point 0, as you can clearly see how much places the decimal point moves, and then you have your power. So my answer is 1.2 by 10 to the power of 3. Now let's have a look at part 2. And this time there is already a decimal point here, which is fine. However, this time the number is smaller than 1, and we need to make it bigger. So we're going to have to move the decimal point to the right this time. So we're moving it to the right one place. So we now have 2.7. The only difference this time is that the decimal point moved to the right instead of the left. This is where it gets slightly complicated, but when it moves to the right, you're going to have a negative power. So essentially, it moved to the right one place, so the power is going to be minus 1. So the n in this case is minus 1, and the a is 2.7. So my answer is 2.7 by 10 to the power of minus 1. Now let's have a look at part b of the question. So in this part of the question, we're asked to work out how long it would take the Falcon to travel 100 meters when driving at 120 miles an hour. However, this question is harder than it might seem at the start, as we're asked to give our answer in seconds, and we're also told the Falcon travels 100 meters. However, at the start, we're given the speed in miles, and the conversion rate is given in miles to kilometers. So it's a bit harder than it seems at the start. However, we can work through it. One thing I will say is that the way they do it in the marking scheme is slightly harder, and I think I'm gonna do it a slightly different way. Uh, both ways are completely fine and will get you full and full marks, but I just think the way that I'm going to do it here is a bit easier to understand. So the first thing to point out is the formula for time. This formula is not in the formula book, so please write it down if you don't know it and please learn it before your exam. So the formula to work out time, so essentially how long it takes somewhere to get somewhere or how long it takes a falcon to dive, for example, is equal to the distance over the speed. So we need to find out how far the falcon is flying and we already know that that's 100 meters. However, the speed is the important thing here, as we've been given it in 120 miles an hour, but we don't need it in miles per hour, we need it in meters per second, because the answer has to be in seconds, and the distance is given in meters. So that's where this question is a bit trickier. So the first thing I'm going to do is work out how many miles it is per second. We know it's 120 miles an hour, but how many miles is that per second? So we know that there's 60 minutes in an hour, and 60 seconds in a minute. So if I divide 120 by 60, and divide it by 60 again, that will give me 120 miles per hour as miles per second, however many miles that is per second. So I'm going to do it, first of all, 120 divided by 60. And I'm going to divide it by 60 again. And then this will give me how many miles per second 120 miles per hour is. So 120 divided by 60 is going to be 2. And divided by 60 again is 1 over 30. So that means 120 miles per hour is equivalent to 1 over 30 miles per second. So that's the first part done. Now remember, the distance is in meters, and we've been given the distance in miles. We are also told though that one mile is equal to 1.6 kilometers, and it's much easier to convert from kilometers to meters rather than from miles to meters, because miles to meters is quite complicated, and we haven't been told how to do that here. However, we do know that there's a thousand meters in a kilometer. So if we convert it to kilometers, it'll be very simple then to convert it to meters. So we have 1 over 30 miles per second. So to get that into kilometers, I'm going to multiply it by 1.6 because for every 1 mile, that's 1.6 kilometers. 
So 1 over 30 miles will be just 1 over 30 by 1.6 kilometers. And we're told that up there. So 1 over 30 by 1.6 is 4 over 75. So that means 120 miles per hour. We can now say that that's equal to 4 over 75 kilometers per second. So now we just need to convert it into meters. We have it in kilometers per second. I need to get it into meters per second. I've already said that 1,000 meters is one kilometer. So to go from kilometers to meters, we can multiply it by 1,000 because obviously one by 1,000 is 1,000 and there's one kilometer for every 1,000 meters. So we have four over 75 kilometers per second. I'm gonna multiply four over 75 by 1,000 and that will give me 120 miles per hour in meters per second, which is exactly what I need. And that gives me 53.3333 continuous, which essentially says that 120 miles per hour is now going to be, we can say, 53.333 meters per second. So now we have the speed, which is 53.33333 meters per second, and the distance, which is 100 meters given at the start. We can now plug this into our formula, which is distance over speed, and that will give us the time it takes the Falcon to travel 100 meters when diving at 120 miles per hour. So dividing 53.33333 into 100, that should give me 1.875. However, it wanted our answer correct to one decimal place, which is 1.9 seconds. So it took the Falcon 1.9 seconds to dive 100 meters. So just to reiterate, I had it in miles per hour. I changed it to miles per second, from that to kilometers per second, and then finally to meters per second. And the question asked for my answer in seconds, and we were given the distance in meters, which meant I had to have the speed in meters per second, which I found. And then from that, I was able to plug that into the formula for time, and I worked out that it took the Falcon 1.9 seconds to dive 100 meters. So that's the answer for part B. Now let's have a look at part C. So we're asked to find the two values of x for which m of x is equal to zero. m of x is going to be equal to zero along the x-axis. So whenever you have a function, in this case m of x, equal to a number, whatever it's equal to is going to be the value along the y-axis, and you've defined the corresponding values on the x-axis. If it's the opposite, and if it's m of a number in place of the x, so for example if it was m at 3 here, you would go to the x-axis at 3, and then find the corresponding y-value. So in this case, we're finding the x-values, as it's m of x is equal to 0, we have the y-value, 0. And whenever the y-value is 0, that's just another way of saying along the x-axis, because y is 0 along the x-axis. So I've drawn a line over the x-axis there in pink, and we can clearly see it hits the x-axis in two places, at 1 and at 4.5. So the two values of x for which m of x is equal to 0 is 1 and 4.5. So that's the answer for part 1. Now let's have a look at part 2. So here we're asked for the range of values of x for which k of x is less than m of x. So let's have a look. So k of x is this function, and m of x is the other function here. So basically we need to find out where the yellow line is below the pink line, and we can clearly see it's below the pink line between these two numbers here. So the two x values for that are 2 and 3.5. So kx is less than m of x between 2 and 3.5. So you can either write this in words or mathematically. I'm going to write it mathematically, but you can also write it in words, which would just be between 2 and 3.5. Or mathematically like this, both ways get you the full 10 marks. So that's my answer for part C, the final part of this question, and also the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope I helped.